was good and true and pure and bright more precious than gold sweeter than honey reviving my soul your testimony your glory display in all creation your living word my meditation waiting for the coming of the king the one of whom we've heard the prophets speak then your word it came to me a light unto my eyes the face of God declaring the skies are proclaiming that there's no denying Jesus you are worthy of praise the heavens declaring the skies are proclaiming that there's no denying Jesus you are worthy of praise the heavens declaring the skies are proclaiming and sound stuck in the ground too lost to be found you're just to see and it's time
All right. Good morning, church family. All right. Well, we're going to go a second time today. Good morning, church family. There was a good dramatic pause there. I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, man, we are glad that you are here at Exchange Avenue Baptist Church this morning. If you happen to be visiting with us today, uh, do us a favor. Take a, mo- take a moment before you walk out today to fill out one of the visitor cards, the Connect cards that can be found on the back of the pew in front of you. Uh, there's also QRs throughout the building that you can scan, and you can fill it out that way as well. But we want to connect with you, and we want to learn how we can better minister to you and connect with you as a staff. So we're excited that you're here today. We're excited that everyone is here today. I invite you where you are, if you're able, to stand with me. I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer, and then we're going to celebrate all that God has done for us this morning through song. Would you pray with me? Lord, we come before you today grateful for all that you do for us and how you love us and the grace that you give us each day. We thank you for that grace, and we thank you for that mercy. Lord, we're asking today that as we begin to celebrate all that you do, Lord, we're asking you to move in power in this place. Before we sing a song of praise, O Lord, would you search our hearts and see if there be any grievous way in us? Would you help us identify sin and repent where we need to repent? And would you lead us in the way everlasting through your loving kindness, O God? And we're asking that if there's anybody here today that does not know you, we pray that today would be the day of salvation. Would you draw sinners to repentance? Would you draw us to know you more and understand more of who you are and how great your love is for us? Lord, we're thankful that you allow us to come together as a unified body of believers today. May we not take that for granted. And may we lift your praises high in this place today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's celebrate this morning what God has done for us. Under so aimless, a life filled with sin, and I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. And then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. And I saw the light, I saw the light. No darkness no more night but now i'm so happy no sorrow inside praise the lord i saw the light just like a blind man i wandered alone the worries and fears i claim for my the blind man that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. And I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow. celebrate that this morning. Turn and greet someone around you today. Welcome them to Exchange. As we continue this morning, today is a special day. 
on the third Sunday of each month. We've started a tradition over the summer months this year, in the year 2024. We have started a brand new tradition for our church. On the third Sunday of each month, uh, we have during our ministry moments what we call our deacon prayer time. And at this time, I want to go ahead and invite our deacons who are in the room today. Uh, they can take a station at a different corner of the sanctuary this morning. Um, this next, these next few minutes, um, just for, for privacy's sake, we're going to dim the lights just a little bit. But as we continue in musical worship, um, stationed throughout the room are uh, various deacons of our church body. And I encourage you, uh, if you are in need of prayer this morning, or if you simply would just like to be prayed over, uh, this next song or two, I want you to utilize this time. Take a step of faith, take a step out, and simply go be prayed over this morning. Allow the Lord to bless you through this time. If there's something that's on your heart that you just want to cry out to the Lord about, utilize this time to go step out of your pew and go visit with a deacon, and they would love to pray over you this morning. So as we continue in worship, absolutely continue in song, but I encourage you, um, allow yourself to be prayed over this morning as we sing. Here we go.
morning, we can rest in the truth that God's grace is sufficient. It is enough for our salvation. Because of the price paid on the cross, we have hope. We have life. Not by anything that you or I can do, but by his grace and his grace alone. It is sufficient. All sufficient. Let's sing that. Sufficient man, a shining light the sun, a fortune I inherit by no work I have done, my righteousness I forfeit at my Savior's cross. Where all sufficient merit did what I could not. In love he condescended, eternal now in time. A life with
know that we serve a God who is all enough. He is all sufficient for us, and he is a holy God. Let's sing of his holiness today. grateful today that we worship a God who is gracious and merciful, and Lord, you are enough, and you are holy, and we pray that um, as we open your word this morning that you would draw us to a place where we become more like yourself. Um, Lord, may we see you in every part of the scripture that we study today. Would you draw us to a place of repentance where we need to repent, and Lord, we ask once again that if there's anybody here today that does not know you, that today would be the day of salvation. May they place their faith and trust in you today. Move in power as we open your word. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you just for a moment to remain standing in the honor of reading God's word. Polo is going to bring our scripture this morning from Revelation chapter 12. Uh, at this time, however, I also invite children who uh, are planning to attend Children's Church today, children four years old through the third grade. They can go with Miss Kathy in the back. Um, they're going to be headed to uh, Children's Church in the children's wing today. And they can be picked up there immediately following service today. Listen this morning as Polo reads our passage of scripture. Good morning. This is Revelation 12, 1 through 17. Verse 1. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains, and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon 
with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she, had, where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Verse 7. Now a war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. That ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brother has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. And they, and they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Verse 13. And when the dragon saw that, that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the, to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and the times and have a time. And the serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman so that to sweep her away with the flood. But the earth came to help the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river and the dragon had poured from his mouth then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring for those who kept the commandments of god and hold the testimony of jesus and he stood on the sand of the sea god bless the reading of his word you may be seated we pray with me father we thank you so much for this day we thank you so much for the scripture that has been read today we ask, O Lord, that you are glorified and honored in all that is said and done today. May these words be your words, not mine. And may, Lord, we be strengthened and edified to know how best to withstand um, the plan and the attack of the evil one. And ultimately know, Lord, that you are in control, that you are reigning, that you are ruling, and that your plans are trustworthy and true. We ask, O oh God, that you would help us, Lord, to um, walk with you. Help us, Lord, to have the strength that we need to be faithful followers of yours. Meet us in our, in our brokenness. Meet us, Lord, in our greatest need. Meet us, Lord, exactly where we're at this morning. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are in the, thir the third series of our, or the third sermon of our series called Spiritual Warfare, and this is uh, we're going to be examining all of Revelation chapter 12 this morning, and I've entitled this sermon uh, "Knowing His Game Plan." Knowing His Game Plan, and so and so what we're going to be seeing this is the progression of the the sermon series to this point. We've got to see spiritual warfare from the mindset of God in the first sermon, spiritual warfare from the mindset of Christians or the human. Now we're seeing spiritual warfare from the mindset of uh, Satan or the devil. And then next week we'll be seeing spiritual warfare from the mindset of, a, of the demons. And so that's kind of the flow of, 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 this, of this sermon series. And, and the purpose of this, really, the purpose of this sermon this morning is to prepare you to withstand the attacks of the devil by knowing his game plan against God and against his people. So this, this specific uh, chapter that Polo just read for us beautifully, 
really goes from eternity past all the way to uh, the present time that it was being written to today and then to eternity future. So some times yet to come. And so there's this sweeping story that is presented to us and we actually get to see um, how the devil is going to try to thwart or attack the plans of God. And guess what? He still does exactly those things today. And so if you wonder why Christians are always under attack or why Israel is always under attack, you can just look to Revelation chapter 12 and you can see why the devil is always seeking to attack God's people, whether it be Israel or Christians, his believers. And that is because if he can stop us, he can stop the plan of God. Or that's according to his mind. And, uh, but we will see that every time that he goes after one of the things that he's seeking to attack, God has provision for it. So there, you will see in this sermon, you'll actually see um, five different ways or five different um, objectives that the, that, that the devil has to attack, um, means to attack, or things that he's going to attack. And he still does this today, and it's, it's, this is for us to have an opportunity to be prepared so that we can know his game plan to withstand his attack, but also that we can trust in the Lord. Because the devil is seeking to go around roaming, um, prowling around like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour, seeking who he can deceive, seeking what he can destroy. And we must be on guard, seeking to communicate the hope and the truth that we have in Jesus to a lost and dying world, but in a way that is not um, naive, in a way that is not aware of how The devil seeks to attack and destroy. Because when we seek to push back darkness in an evil and dark world, that is when we will have objection come our way. So the best way to withstand attacks from an enemy is to know the enemy's game plan or the plan of attack and be prepared. uh, And to be prepared is, and to be, be prepared for a strike to take place. And the Bible provides for us the devil's plan of attack. Um, We know who he is, and we know who he is, and who he's going, who he is going to attack, and why. So let's look. The devil's first objective um, is to oppose Jesus. This comes from the first six verses of Revelation 12. So I just want to read read this, the first three verses, to begin with. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. She had a crown with 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out with birth pains and of agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and on his heads were seven diadems. Verse 4, his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. Then the drag and the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that she so that when she bore her son, her child, he could devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who will rule the nations with an iron rod. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness that was um, wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God in which she will be nourished for 1,260 days. So, what we see here, and if you take the whole context of those six verses, the woman, so uh, some. John saw a sign, so he did not see a woman. He saw a sign like a woman. It's very important that when you enter or leave Oklahoma and you see a sign for Arkansas or Texas or Kansas, you, that sign is not Arkansas, Texas, or Kansas. It's a sign that says you've entered into that place where you're going. So it's a marker. 
So he saw something that resembled. So this is a sign that resembled a woman. So this is not a woman. So this is not Mary. That's the first thing. But what it really is, is Israel. So he saw a sign of Israel, and from Israel came Jesus. And so the, from Israel, from the line of Abraham, from the line of David, from God's chosen people came God's chosen king, that is David. Or that is, sorry, that is Jesus. And so notice what we have as we see this woman who is Israel, she's pregnant, and she is going to then give birth to a child. And at the same time, we then go to eternity past, where we then see something like a dragon, which resembles the devil. And notice, with his tail, he takes down one-third of the stars. Well, that's the angels that are now fallen, so fallen angels. So there's two-thirds of the stars that are still up there. Those are holy angels. There's one-third of the stars that are fallen. Those are fallen angels, or, or His demons. And so what happens is in eternity past, those those, um, demons or those fallen angels fall, and Satan is now ready to pounce from the very beginning on Jesus. He's waiting. So now you can actually trace back in, in Israel's past all the times and the hardships and the challenge that Israel had all go back to people attacking them, all go back to the Satan's plan against God's people. Why? Because if he could thwart God's people, he would thwart God's plan. But his first attack was to stop Jesus. This should remind you of Genesis 3, Chapter 3, verse 15, which says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He, that is Satan, shall bruise your head, and you shall shall bruise his heel. And so we see this from the get-go, that there is this, this enmity between the woman which is the picture there of Eve, but it turns into the picture of what we see in this text of Israel. And then Jesus, who is the ruler who's going to rule with the iron rod. And so any time that we then think about in our culture that Jesus is brought up, Jesus is going to be attacked by our culture because the devil does not want Jesus to be taught about, doesn't want the name of Jesus to be proclaimed, does not want the name of Jesus to be heard so that people could believe and turn from the darkness to the light. I want to remind you of uh, when Jesus was born in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 18 says this, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise up and take take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt... I called my son. Verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent to kill all the male children in Bethlehem and all that region who were two years old and younger, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. This was fulfill, fulfilling what the prophet had spoken by, by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. So Jesus, from the time he was two, Satan was even, he had been come, he come into this world, he'd been born, 
Satan tried to kill him, and that is seen, an illustration of that is seen by how Herod tried to have Jesus murdered, but then guess what happened? God protected. God delivered. God stepped in. Another way that Satan tried to to derail Jesus in his ministry was after Jesus was baptized. He went into the desert. And in Matthew chapter 4, we know that he was tempted by Satan three times. And the purpose of that was to give Jesus the world without the cross. It was an illusion of what Jesus would receive from God if he went to the cross. And it was an illusion that that the Satan was going to say, if you bow down to me, I'll give you everything God's already going to give you. But Satan's not powerful enough to do that. Jesus withstood Satan in that moment. And, And so because of that, Satan continued his attacks. And in Luke 22, this is right before the death of Christ, it says this in verse 3, when Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was, one of the, who was of the number of the twelve, he went away and conferred with the chief priests and the officers how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and they agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray him in the absence of crowd. So it was God's plan for for Jesus to die. But whose plan was it also for Jesus to die? Satan's. You see, Satan thought that he was going to defeat Jesus on the cross. He thought he was going to show his power over God. He thought that he was going to win and have victory and thwart the plans of God. What I'm trying to illustrate in this moment and what we see in Revelation chapter 12 is this. From eternity past, Satan has set himself up against God. And all through our history, we see Satan continuing to set himself up against Jesus. And so he is against and opposing and attacking Jesus and him and his stances. And so as a follower of Jesus... You need to know and be aware that you are carrying the banner of Christ. And if Satan opposes Christ, who else is he going to oppose? And so you can't walk and be naive thinking that you're just going to walk through this world and have no opposition from the devil if you are a faithful Christian. Because as a faithful child of Christ, you will see the same or similar challenges that he saw as he walked on earth this earth. So the devil's first objective is to oppose Jesus. And so we see here in these first verses that Israel is pregnant and Israel gives birth to uh, Jesus and this dragon is present and this dragon seeks to eat this child after it is devour the child after it is born verse 5 uh, verse 5 says she gives birth to this male this male child who will rule the nations with an iron rod but her child was caught up to God and to his throne so that is now Jesus so we've gone from eternity past to now eternity present where Jesus is on His throne. But then the woman fled into the wilderness, a place prepared by God. And how long did she stay there? 1,260 days. This gives us a defining moment when this event is going to take place. That event specifically, this now tells us it's in the, it, the tribulation time. So the the... Israel is told in Matthew chapter 24 to when, when the, um, at a moment in time when and the object of desolation is seen there in Israel, there in Jerusalem, that they are to flee to the wilderness. They're not, if they're on the roof, they're not to go into their house and grab stuff. If they're in the field, they're not to go home. If they are pregnant, woe to you if you are. 
and hope it's not winter time. Does that verse sound rem- remarkable, like familiar to you? At that point, where are they going to flee? They're going to flee to the wilderness. We don't really know. Some people assume where it is. But here's, what's go- well, here's what we're going to see. In that moment, Israel is told, the Israelites are told to flee during this tribulation time. And they're told to flee, and somehow God is going to protect them. And we're going to see more of this in, in, in a couple verses. But God is going to have his hand of protection over the Israelites in a certain spot. And even at that point when Satan is then cast down to the earth and he tries to attack the people of God, there is a place where there's going to be coverage and protecting and um, where there will be deliverance for his people. And we'll see that here in a minute. And hopefully this makes a little bit more sense. But notice... Through these verses, what we see, Satan opposes God, God provides. Satan opposes God, God provides. This is a theme that we're going to see through the rest of this chapter. So we've seen first, the devil's first objective is to oppose Jesus. What is the devil's second? The devil's second objective is to oppose the holy angels. Let's look at verse 7 and 9, or 7 and 8. Now there was... Now a war arose in heaven. Michael and his angels are fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. And he, that is the dragon, was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. So let's just pause and kind of talk through this for a quick second. So up until this moment, where have the devil and his demons predominantly have been, resided? Most people assume when they read scripture that the devil, uh, because the devil is somewhere here on earth, and he's prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour, which is, yes, we have a, a scripture verse there that says that. But what we have here in this context is the There's a battle that is waging in the heavenlies, if you will, where Satan is and where God is and where the angels are. And what we see in this section is that there's going to become a time when there's not going to be enough room for the demons to have a place with Satan in the heavenlies anymore. So they're going to be cast down to the earth. And if you jump down... um, Just a little bit, we'll just begin to continue reading in verse 9. It says this, And the dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who's called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He's thrown down to the earth, and and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down. Catch this. Who accuses them day and night before God? Okay? The accuser of our brothers who has accused our brothers before God day and night. And get, catch this. For all, for all history. So, where, so we think that when we, we, at times when we are reading Job, well, it's interesting that Satan just comes up and appears before God. And why would Satan then say, oh, hey, I want to I wanna tempt, tempt Job. Let me see Job. Well, what has Satan been doing from the very beginning? Accusing the brothers. Day and night before God going before them and saying, they're not worthy of you. They don't deserve you. Look at their sin. Accusing, accusing, accusing before God. It's amazing. Notice what verse 11 says, that they have conquered. They, that is the people who are believers, have conquered by the blood of the Lamb. Conquered Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's going to be some good news here in a minute. So Satan opposes the holy angels. Why would Satan oppose the holy angels? Who are the the angels? Angels are God's messengers. 
So they work for God to help us, if you will. And the best way for me to illustrate this for us from a biblical context is Daniel chapter 10, verses 2 through 14. So I'm going to read a little bit of scripture here, and I just want you to listen to the story. Because what you're going to, what you're going to assume isn't the case with the story. I just want you to hear it. So it says this, Daniel chapter 10, verse 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat, no wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and behold, a man clothed in linen with a belt of gold from uh, Euphaz around, of, from Euphaz around his waist. His body was like briar. His face was the appearance of lightning. His eyes seemed like, torch, like flaming torches. His legs, his arms and legs are the gleaming of burnished bronze. And the sound of his words, like the sound of a multitude, and I, Daniel, saw the vision, saw the vision for the men with whom, uh, uh, for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was alone and saw this great vision. And no strength was left in me. My radiant appearance was fearfully changed, and I retained no strength. Then I heard the voice of his words, and I heard the sound of his words, and I fell on my face in a deep sleep and with my face to the ground. Okay, so at this point... Who are we thinking that Daniel is going to be seeing? We're going to be, you would assume, with this much power, it's going to be like a pre-incarnate Christ. It's going to be an appearance of that. But catch this, verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly loved... Understand the words that I speak to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. And when he had spoken these, this word to me, I stood up trembling. He said, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. So a messenger was sent, an angel was sent from God to Daniel, and the prince of Persia withstood, of the kingdom of Persia, withstood him for 21 days. So he was battling a demon for 21 days. But Michael, the one, one of the chief princes, came and helped me. So a stronger angel was then sent by God to help this angel release or be cleared to then continue with the message to Daniel. For I was left there, <clears throat> for I was left there with the king of Persia and, ca- and came to make you understand what is, happen- what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for the days yet to come. So what we have here, we're not even going to get to the vision for the days yet to come. What I want to illustrate for you, Daniel's praying, Daniel's seeking the Lord. God answers Daniel's prayer, and he answers, answers it by sending Daniel an angel. The angel is coming to Daniel to share a message, to declare something to him. And what happens? 
a demon who is re, who is um, who resides over, if you will, the kingdom of Persia, and is in control of its king, starts battling said demon. Why? Or battling said, that demon battles the angel. Why? To thwart the message of God. God then sends Michael, who we're going to see here, who we just were introduced to in uh, chapter 12 of Revelation, who is the archangel, who is the warrior, who is a great battler. He's the one who helps send the devil and the demons down to earth during the Great Tribulation. But there's a spiritual warfare taking place. And the devil opposes Jesus, and the devil opposes his messengers. Why? He opposes the plan of God. So this is an illustration for us of this battle. We know that it says in Ephesians, we know that it says that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 12, finally be strong in the Lord in the strength of His might and put on the whole armor of God that you'll, be, that you'll be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities and against the cosmic powers over the present darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. This is an illustration of that. What does it mean that there are spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly places. We're seeing it here in Revelation 12. We're seeing it here in Daniel chapter 10. We're seeing it here how the devil opposes Jesus and how the devil opposes Jesus' messengers, the holy angels. Why? The angels are here to help strengthen and help help God's people. Give them what they need. Provide for them. Care for them. And the devil is ultimately against God's people. And so I've broken that up into two different groups. So what I first want us to see here is the devil. The devil's third objective is to oppose Israel. And at at every time in Israel's history, we can see how the devil continues to oppose Israel. And it even got that the birth line of, of, of Christ, and if you will, history got down to one child at one point, but God provided. God intervened. And I just want to highlight this for Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 21 says this. So when you see the abomination of desolation of spoken by the prophet of Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let the one who is standing on the house not go back into his house and let the one who is in the field not turn back to get his cloak. And alas, For any woman who is pregnant, for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight might not be in winter or on a Sabbath, but, or for, then there will be a great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, nor will ever be. The reason I want to read that to you is because I think about that verse in connection with verses 13 through 16 back in Revelation 12, if you want to turn there. Then the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, and he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great 
eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time, times, and half a time. Then the serpent poured out water like a river from his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood, but the earth came to help the woman. And the earth opened its mouth to swallow the river that the dragon had poured out from his mouth. We'll just pause right there. And so what we see here, the devil's objective is to oppose Israel. And so what, what's going to happen is the devil then is cast down onto earth and with his demons, sent out of heaven. And it's, the question at hand is why is the devil at this point cast out? Because there's no more room in heaven for the devil and his demons his demons, and one could suppose it's because the rapture has already taken place. We don't necessarily have complete scriptural backing for that, but you, could, you can get there. But now, he's going to really turn his attention to taking out all of the Israelites and then all of the Christians. And so what we see here is that God says, go and run to the wilderness, Israel, Go and run to the wilderness, my people. I will provide for you. And so that is take the wings of an eagle and go hide in the wilderness for a time, times, and half a time. So one time is one year, times is two years, and half a time is half a year. So that's three and a half years. And three and a half years comes to be 1,260 days. So we're talking about the same time period that we were talking about in the, very, in the first six verses. So this is all around the seven-year tribulation, but it's specifically focused in on three and a half years of that seven-year tribulation. So what is Satan going to do when he's here on earth for that three and a half years? He's going to try to thwart and go after and fight against God's people, the Israelites. And so how is that illustrated here in chapter 12? It's illustrated by um, the devil having the ability to take a rib, make a river come out of his mouth in the quantity of water. And he's going to try to drown the Israelites in water. But what is God going to do? Because he knows where they're going in, in the wilderness. He can see where they're going. He can go after them, if you will. And he does so with this water. But God opens up the earth. God opens up the ground and does what? Swallows the water. To do what? Protect his people. Because the devil tried to attack Jesus, and Jesus won. The devil tries to conquer or thwart the angels, and who wins? The angels. He goes after the Israelites, and ultimately, who's going to win? The Israelites. Why? Why? Because there's God's people. They're God's people. But after he sends us water, he doesn't just stop because he's like, he goes after them and can't get there, so he pivots. And I just want you to notice, turn to verse 17. And so here's the shift. And then the dragon became furious with the woman, that is Israel, and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring. So that's um, people who aren't just completely Jewish, if you will, other offspring. And on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus, that are, those are Christians. And he stood on the sea. So the the devil's objective is not just to oppose Israel, but then fourthly, the devil's objective is to oppose believers. And so this is why we must, as Christians, put on the full armor of God and be, and, and be strengthened by the council of churches. So when you think about the full armor of God, a lot of times we make that individualistic, that that is all about me to put on the full armor of God. And yes, we try to do that as best we can ourselves, but it's really a corporate putting on the armor of God. We all need each other to put on the full armor of God. This is not individualistic Christianity, John Wayne style, that each of you have to just armor up daily in that sense. 
But no, we depend upon each other and rely on each other. So we're all armored as the body of Christ together, fighting together the battle of the attacks of the devil. You might say, well, pastor, where's the good news in this? The good news comes in this. The devil's, fifthly, the devil's fifth objective is to oppose the world. I skipped over verse 12 on purpose. Because I, this is where I want to conclude this morning. Well, let's, for context's sake, let's go back up to verse 10. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of Christ has come for the accuser of our brothers. It has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony for they loved not their lives even unto death. Therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows his time is short. So this is now highlighting the reality that in the tribulation time, when the devil is sent down to earth in this moment, there is now a woe sent out, not just to the people on earth, but to the earth itself and to the sea itself, saying, woe to you because you're now going to be in the presence of Satan. And he's going to have great wrath against who? The world, the water, and the people. And if you've read the Revelation, you know that great destruction happens to the water, to the land, and to the people. There's lots of people who die, lots of water gets turned into blood, and lots of land is destroyed. Lots of sulfur, lots of things take place. It's a horrible time on earth. Why? Because of the wrath of Satan. His hatred against men, but ultimately his hatred against God. And what does he want to do? What is his sole purpose? To continue to deceive the people of earth to believe him and not God. To keep people from believing in Jesus. So who is he going to attack on earth? The Israelites. The Jews. Who is he going to attack on earth? Believers, Christians, how many Christians will be killed during this time? A lot. How many Jews will be killed during this time? A lot. Why? Because Satan is trying to thwart and oppose God. But each of those people, as we saw just in verse 12, they did not love their life more than they loved the Lord. So they were willing to die there for that cost. Christ gave his life up for me. I'm willing to give my life up for my faith in Christ. But did you catch the good news? The conqueror here. The conqueror here of Satan is God. And we as Christians must be equipped. So I know this is a more challenging section of Scripture, but I want to break the whole thing down for you for a bigger perspective so that you see that the devil is, is truly trying to deceive the world and that this is how the devil works. He opposes Jesus. He opposes his angels. He opposes, um, he opposes Israel. He opposes Christians. But ultimately, Fifthly, he opposes the world. He truly wants the whole world to be deceived and follow his lie. Follow him, the great murderer. Follow him because he knows his time is short. He doesn't think he's going to beat God. He knows he can't. 
But the sad thing in the world is most people think that their enemy is God and their friend is Satan. The greatest deception. What does the Bible say? You have a friend in Jesus and your enemy is the devil. But do you see how easy it is to deceive a lost world? So Christians, we must be prepared, we must be equipped, and we must be tasked. But if you're here today and you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus, know this, there is good news that God has provided salvation for you with all the power of His hand and that the kingdom of His Christ has come and has bottled up the accuser and that you have the ability to conquer Satan, sin, and death, not by your own good works, but by the blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God, who paid the price for you and your sins to overcome. You don't need to be bound by your sin. You don't need to be bound by the wrath that you are under. But rather, you can be free and free indeed under the name and the work and the person of Jesus. We need not fear Satan. We need not fear death. We need not fear the future because we know who's the victor. God is the winner. It's His story. The question at hand for us in this battle is, are we equipped to handle? Are we equipped to prepare? Are we prepared for the attacks that have already been taking place and the attacks that are going to be continuing to come upon all of us. The first way we're prepared for it is that we have the Holy Spirit in us. The next way we're prepared for it is by knowing and studying the Word of God that helps us understand and see glimpses into this battle. Be on guard, my brothers and sisters. Stand firm In your faith, act like men. Be strong and do all that you do with love. If you're here today and you need to place your faith and trust in Jesus, respond this morning. As the band makes their way forward, we're going to be having a song of response. If you need to pray because you have felt the spiritual attack in your life, Of course, the altar is open. You can come and and kneel before the altar. I'd invite you to do so. Or if you'd like me to pray for you specifically, I'd be honored to. If you've never been baptized and would like to take that step of of trust and putting your faith, uh, take that step of faith and and, um, declaring your faith in Jesus by being baptized, come on down. I'd be honored to baptize you. And if you'd like to lock arms, partner with us, and join our church, we, we need you. God has given us a big vision and mission here to best reach our community for the glory of God, the good of the city, and the salvation of souls. And we need all, as many people as we can to, do, to accomplish that task. Will you stand with me as I pray? God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for this text of Scripture. And we ask, oh God, that you would move in this time, in this place, as we seek you with our whole heart, not leaning on our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledging you, allowing you to make our path straight. God, we thank you for protecting every attack that the devil brings against your plan. We thank you, Lord, for overcoming We ask, Lord, that you will continue to provide for each of us as we seek to be faithful to the call you've placed upon our life. We ask, Lord, that you will bind the force of the evil one who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. That you put a hedge of protection around each person here in this room and who's a part of the church, Lord, who, from the attacks of the evil one, may you protect them from his flaming darts. And may they prosper under your mighty hand. 
And may they seek to advance your kingdom here on earth by being the gospel light you've called them to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. morning. I've got a few announcements for you today. First and foremost, uh, you can find any announcements every single week in the Exchange Weekly, so I encourage you to pick up a copy of that on your way out. We update that every single week, so take some time to grab one of those on your way out the door today. Uh, in addition to that, as always, you'll have the opportunity to give of tithes and offerings on your way out the door. Uh, also, if you're visiting, once again, I want to remind you of our uh, uh, connect cards that can be found in the back of the pew in front of you uh, or the QR codes that we have around the building. Please, please, please utilize that. We want to connect with you in any way we can. Uh, first and foremost, as far as big announcements go, uh, as soon as we dismiss in here today, we're going to be headed over to the South Circle building. Our food pantry is tomorrow from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, so we encourage you, if you have 30 minutes to spare this afternoon, uh, as soon as we're done in here, we're going to go pack for the pantry tomorrow in the South Circle building. So if you have about 30 minutes to spare, uh, that's usually about how long it takes. We'd love for you to join us over there. It's always a fun time to just kind of uh, pack those bags together as a church family, uh, and it's a good time to fellowship as well, so it's a lot of fun. So we encourage you to stay back for just a few minutes and take care of that with us. And if you're able to serve tomorrow at the food pantry, we encourage you to do so. 
Uh, we've got uh, some new things we're going to be doing at the food pantry tomorrow, so we encourage you We encourage you to be here. And if you can be here at 3, specifically, uh, we want you to be here around 3 p.m. if possible, if you're able to serve. That way we can get you ready to go, uh, get people uh, started a little bit early tomorrow as well. So it's going to be a great day at our food pantry. If you're able to help, we'd love for you to be there tomorrow. Uh, looking ahead, uh, pick, like I said, pick up a copy of the Exchange Weekly. Uh, we'll be updating some other things uh, about the month of September and the days to come, but we encourage you to continue to live a life that is honoring and pleasing to the Lord as we go today. Would you stand with me as I close us in a word of prayer this morning? Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful for all that you do for us. We're grateful that uh, we know and we can rest in the truth that the battle is won. Whatever is going on around us, the attacks of the enemy, Lord, that we can withstand those knowing that we have hope and we can trust you, that you are the author and the perfecter of our faith, and you give us that hope for eternity. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon, everybody. Filled with sin, I wouldn't let my dear Savior win. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw. The light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light.